um, making sure that your licensing permits, everything's correct for the, the city, the county where you're at. We also can help you with your EIN number because that's important and marketing and social media. We also can, and all our services, just so you guys know, are free. So why wouldn't you take this? I don't understand, but you know, hey, please join us. Um, we can help you with, um, if you're not sure what you wanna do, we have training classes that you're more than welcome to take and we can kind of guide you through that and your finances. And we have a few people that can do QuickBooks, you know, and God, I'd really like to work with Google. Maybe we can set up some classes for them. Okay, thank you. That's Fine. me, Mike. Oh, thank you. Um, my name is Michael Johnson. I am the executive director for the Sunnyvale Downtown Association. Um, for those who might not be familiar, a um, the Sunnyvale Downtown Association is a business improvement district. So we have a designated segment of the city, um, a certain territory that we are responsible for the businesses within that area. There's approximately 300 businesses that we kind of oversee as a representative for the Sunnyvale Downtown Business uh, Improvement District Association. Um, and our primary goal is basically to advocate, to promote, to uh, improve the vitality of the businesses in the downtown district. And that's our primary mission. And we're always trying to elevate our businesses awareness to cutting edge, new technology um, techniques and skill sets that might help them improve their services. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mike. And uh, really want to express our uh, deepest gratitude uh, partnering with Google in supporting local small businesses through this effort. Um, I'd like to introduce Roberto Martinez uh, with Google. He's going to be uh, taking us through to uh, uh, through uh, today's workshop. And uh, I'll turn it over to you, Roberto. So first and foremost, thank you so much, Christine, the amazing work that you do for the city and. and your support and not giving up on us. I know this was a long time in the making and we're here now very excited to be here supporting not just you, but also uh, Michael and Connie, whatever way we can. Uh, you guys are a great partner. So we're, we're excited to be here. We're excited to start this relationship and get us kicking off for 2025. Uh, okay, so let's get started. Let's, let's jump right into get your business online and how we can help you as a business owner grow your presence online, increase those sales during the holiday season, and leverage the heck out of these free services that Google provides you as an entrepreneur. A little bit about myself. Uh, I know some folks already asked, can we get a hold of you? Of course you can. Here's my contact information, Roberto Mora at google.com. Feel free to shoot me an email. We do provide about one hour a month of free technical assistance when it comes to a conversation with me about any Google challenges that you may have. Uh, and so I know Leobi might be on the call. Oh, he, he could drop the on the chat a link where you could register so that you can have that one-on-one -on -one time with other entrepreneurs. We always invite multiple entrepreneurs into that one-on-one -on -one session because we always feel it's better to have a collaborative experience. Okay, enough about that. Let's jump right into this presentation. I am the Google State Coach from California. I'm here to help you guys out. I'm here to help you get as much access as possible when it comes to Google services, Google tools, free and paid. I've been doing this for eight years now for Google uh, in this capacity. I'm also an entrepreneur just like you. I've launched my company about 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Uh, and I realized, you know what? We need to be there for our small business owners. We need to make sure we help them grow and scale. And that's why I'm here, because I realize that we need folks to sometimes just give us an extra an extra help. There's amazing organizations like uh, the Downtown Development District and the SBDC, but sometimes you also need uh, a fellow Googler or former Googler or a contractor to help you walk through how to use Google tools and services. And that's exactly what the conversation is going to be around today. How and to get your business... Add Oh, yes. If I may add, Roberto, um, if anyone has questions, uh, Roberto is open to answer them during the session or after if we have some time for Q&A. So feel free to pop your question in the chat um, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks, Roberto. That's exactly right, Christine. I want this is your time. This is your time. So feel free to ask me whatever questions you may have as we're going through it. If I can answer it during the presentation, I will be happy to table it for some other time where I could find the right resource for you. Okay, so with that, uh, how to get your business online. We do have a video 
uh, but I'm going to skip it for now because they're going to add, like Google's asking me for uh, access and I'll get back to it if we have enough time in the presentation. Let's talk about what is your Google business profile. So for those in the audience, press one if you have Google business profile, press two if you do not have a Google business profile, just to get a sense of who are the folks in the room and if you guys are leveraging the Google business profile or if you guys aren't. That way I can have a better sense of how to help you. Okay, so it doesn't seem like you guys have it or don't have it, but I'm going to assume that most of us do not have the Google business profile. So what is the Google business profile? It's the way you can be found on the world's largest search engine that happens to be Google search. This is just a high level overview of what it looks like when you're on your phone, you have the name of your company, photos, how to get in contact, location, and your phone number. So let's get into it. Why is it so important? And the simple reason is that over 18 million businesses are on this platform, receiving phone calls, getting directions to the, their business location, connecting with their customers and messaging functionality. We want customers to be able to get a reach and in contact with you if they need to call you, email you, message you, or book an appointment. So what does this look like? Well, we know more than ever people are on their phones, leveraging their phones when they're hungry, when they're tired, when they hear that they're clinking in their car. And so what happens, you grab your phone and you start looking for how to solve that problem that you're having. Or you might be in a new city. I was just in Northern Las Vegas. I didn't know my way around. And what did I do? I grabbed this Google Maps. I started looking for different uh, locations of how I, go, I can go about finding uh, your restaurant or the chamber of commerce that I was going to. And guess what? Different restaurants, different local businesses popped up on my Google Maps. And we know that's extremely important because our business is local. So if you want your local customer to find you, you want to register on Google Business Profile. Here's the best part. The moment you register on Google Business Profile, Google is going to automatically set up that profile across all devices, laptops, desktops, or mobile devices. So it doesn't matter if your customer is using a desktop, laptop, tablet, or phone, they're going to be able to find you. So let's talk about how to create your business profile. Very, very straightforward. First thing we want to do is we want to go to google.com backslash business. The one thing you will need is a Gmail account. And with that Gmail account, you can register your business profile. Now, I do want to say this. It's extremely important for you to use a Gmail account that's associated to your business. And the reason why is because your business profile is going to be connected to your business the moment you guys set up that profile. So make sure you use a, a business profile that you have access to. There's a lot of times when we're setting up business profiles, when the business owner tells their cousin, their uncle, their niece, their nephew, or their marketing it manager to set up the profile and guess what happens the niece goes off to college the manager finds a new job and guess what the profile is connected to it's connected to that email address so make sure you use an email address that you have complete access to and the first thing we're going to do to add your address and your business to the profile is there's three options here there's you go to maps.google.com and you search for your address and see if it pops up option two which is the one that you can definitely use when you're searching for your company on Google search. It's click on the three dot line on the left side of the menu and add the business. And you can also click when you see the address, add your business address and it follows your prompt. Very, very straightforward to set up your Google business profile on Google Maps. Another way you could go about doing it is signing in to your Gmail account, and once you sign up, you can start creating that profile. So most of us here have a Gmail account. Again, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, it bears repeating. You want to make sure you attach that business profile to a Gmail account you have access to. You always want to do that. Roberto. Okay. Yes. There is a question that came up. Um, if it's appropriate to answer now. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I have tried to to adjust my location um, many times, but for some reason it still shows my location being inside Target and I am not. How can I? 
<laughs> well, th that's a good and bad problem. If you do have a location in Target, the foot traffic alone will make sure that you're selling. But that's a great question. So yes, you can definitely set a uh, change your location. I'll walk you through how to go about doing that at the tail end of this conversation. So bear with me for about 30, 35 minutes, and then we'll show you how you can go about changing your address. You can even change your name on your Google business profile. Let's assume you go through a rebrand. You could do that. The thing is you have to have access to your Gmail account and you have to have access to the business profile. Great question. I think it, it's going to be very indicative in helping you better understand how to manage that profile. And we'll get to that phase. Um, so yeah, so right now we're just thinking through how to set this up. We have the Gmail account. We go to Google business profile. We start adding our information on the business profile. It takes about five to seven minutes. As a matter of fact, yesterday, I was going through a presentation in Northern Las Vegas and the individual did it in real time. She was like, as I was presenting, she said, oh, let me try to do it myself. And she went in there and she was able to set up her Google business profile very, very quickly. Okay, so we're writing our name down. We're writing the business category. This is another important piece. We want to make sure you guys are serial entrepreneurs. You guys are doing all kinds of great business. You guys are selling. You guys are providing services. What I always tell folks is when you choose the business category, be hyper-focused on which business category drives the most amount of sales for your business. And that's where you want to lead with. Once we do that, we want to add a location customers can visit. So this is a really key one. A lot of folks tell me, uh, do, can I have a business profile if I don't have a fixed location, if I don't have a brick and mortar location? Short answer, yes, you can. Google is going to give you this option of choosing if you do have a store location like the one in Target. Uh, obviously, it's not in Target, but let's assume you have an actual fixed location. You could definitely add that location. But if you don't have a location, you could add what are called geographical locations. You could tell uh, folks, yeah, I cover Sunnyvale, but I also cover San Jose. I also cover part of northern uh, San Jose all the way up to San Francisco. So you can pick and choose geographic locations that you cover while not having a fixed location like a store. So very important. If you do have a location, great. Say yes. If you do not have a location, not a problem. Say no. If you do have an address, you want to type it in here because we want to drive foot traffic. We want to drive folks to your location. Now, if you don't have a location, you add those service areas that I was talking about, those geographic locations, and you could add as many as you want. Uh, some people say, should I add the whole country? Uh, I would not add the whole country, and there's a simple reason why. A little bit earlier on, we talked about how all business is local. You want your local neighbor to buy from you, and that neighbor also wants to buy from you. They don't want to buy from someone out in Washington or out in New York or Florida or North Dakota, they want to buy from you if they can buy from you. So you want to list the service areas that are closest to your location or where you service those areas. So for example, uh, I am based out of Los Angeles. There's about five different cities where I live. I list those five cities, but you can list 10, 15, 20 cities if you want to list those cities as service areas that you can provide those services for. Next, you're going to write your contact information. If you have a business phone number, you're going to add that. If you have a website, you're going to add that. Now, you don't have to necessarily have a website, uh, but if you do have a website, definitely drop it in. Emmy, Emily asked a great question. For online businesses, can I use a mailbox number? Unfortunately, for Google Business Profile, you cannot add a PO Box number. We do not accept PO Box numbers. We, we understand this might be a challenge, but we would definitely recommend that when it comes to setting up your business profile, you actually add a service area as opposed to a PO Box number. I don't know why they do it. I can't really help you answer that question, but that's a great question. We get it all the time. Now, we're going to get to a, a point in this presentation where Google is going to ask you to verify the address. This is not an address that they're verifying where you're selling your product or service. This is to verify you're an actual human being and you have an actual business. And they want to verify that by sending you a postcard. That postcard is going to go to the address you give it, and it can't be a PO box number either. It has to be an actual address. And they're not going to list that address 
on the World Wide Web. They're gonna, they're just gonna send you that postcard. And it's a really important way to verify your address. Great question, Emily. Thank you for raising it. We always get that question. It's a very common question. So with that, we're gonna add our phone number. If you do not have an, a website, you can just click, I do not have a website and go next. Uh, Google has a website solution. It's a one-page solution that we could talk a little bit about later if you're interested in learning more about that solution. Okay, with that, we're gonna do a verification. We talked about this, literally just mentioned this. You could get a phone call with people verify you. Sometimes you cannot get a phone call and they'll say, hey, we need to mail out a postcard. Sometimes if you have a restaurant or a fixed location, they're gonna ask for a video, which is unique. Uh, this happens some of the time, not all, always, but some of the time they're ask, gonna ask for a video, which just means grab your phone, walk through your location and take a quick video just to make sure that you actually have a brick and mortar location. And so once you choose that verification method, you can verify your business profile. So some services are going to ask, hey, we need to send you and mail you a verification. This usually takes three to five days to be mailed out to you. You're gonna get a five digit, ten, uh, five digit 10 to verify that address, not the address, excuse me, to verify the business that you have. And that's what we want. We want to get verified. They say 14 working days. The truth is I never heard of being longer than five days. And if you don't receive it by five days, you could definitely reach out to Google to make sure that it's verified. And so with that, you're live. And we're going to talk a little bit about managing it. Now, I do, let me, let me just, just do this real quickly. I think it's worth the, the interruption in the presentation. I want to share with you guys um, how you would go about setting up and changing the address of your location. So what do I mean by that? Well, once you start getting into your Google business profile, you can go in and edit the Google business profile. So let me share my screen here. Let me give me one quick second. I'm going to share my screen so you could see how it's done. And that way we could all be on the same page. All right, great. So this is my company's business profile. You see it right here, your business profile. And the way you will go about editing your business profile is at this feature. I'm logged in with my Gmail account. Uh, here's edit profile. And this is the place you can change your address. This is where you would do it. So let me go back. You sign into your Gmail account, you go to your business name, and my Gmail account is associated to my business profile. Remember, it's very important to associate that Gmail account with your business profile. Now, I see all the information. It gives me stats on how my website is doing. I wouldn't be a good digital coach if I didn't have uh, high numbers here. But for the lady that was asking, how do I change my address? You go to edit profile. You go to location, and then you change your business profile right there. And this is the service area. So I have an actual brick and mortar location, but I also added all the different service areas that I cover. Now, uh, let's say it doesn't work. and You keep trying to change it and change it and change it, and it still doesn't work. Well, now we want to submit a ticket to Google. These three little dots, we're going to click on those three little dots, and we're going to Go here to help and support. We're going to click on that button. And at the very bottom, contact us. And you're going to click on that contact us. And you're going to list the reason why you're contacting this. And your scenario is that I cannot, um, I cannot change my address. That's what you would tell them. And you'll get that'll submit a ticket to Google and they'll respond in about a couple days, uh, 48 hours, I would say, you'll get a tick, an email sent to the email address telling you, hey, we've received your, your request. We'll get back to you in a couple of days. Hopefully that was clear as day. <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. Uh, let me present my screen one more time. Beautiful. All right, great. And there we are. All right, great. Let's get into it. Let's get into how to manage your business profile. So I kind of showed you the back end. That is exactly what you saw in my business profile. 
And this, this is your dashboard, if you will. This is where you can edit your profile, receive messages, add photos, view performance, run ads, re receive question and answer, uh, set up bookings, you name it. This is your dashboard where you can receive all that information and make edits to your website. Uh, we mentioned a little bit earlier, we might want to change locations. We want to go to that little button where I said edit profile and then go to the locations category and change it. You can actually change hours. This is a big one. I think it's two of the biggest features and the biggest uh, pieces of information that your customers are always asking for is, are you open? Where are you located? So I would highly, highly, highly recommend to maintain your hours of operation, especially during the holiday season. It's extremely important. The other piece that I would say is extremely important is the description. Why is that? Because Google wanna, wants to match your description, which has keywords and key phrases. And let me tell you what a keyword is. A keyword is a perspective word or, or, or phrase that your prospective customers type it in on the Google search engine. That's considered a keyword or a key phrase. And you want to make sure you're thinking through the keywords and key phrases your customers are typing in to the Google search engine, to the Google search bar, if you will. And that's going to connect that word or phrase with your description on your business profile. Uh, and so that's important to think through. Make sure you're very descriptive and thinking through the words and phrases that your prospective customers are typing it in. Uh, this is another great pro tip. And the reason why is because we've, we've seen studies that show that folks who do identify their attribute, hey, I'm better known, I'm woman owned, uh, there's a higher increase in traffic to their profiles. And so we know this to be true based on market research. Uh, I, I don't want to give the number out. I want to say it's 8 to 10 percent, but don't quote me on that, of, uh, of customers who like the fact that you're woman-owned and so therefore are looking for women-owned businesses to work with. And so you can choose different attributes to stand out from the crowd. I don't know if we have another question. Uh, no, we do not. Okay. Um, Pro tip for those brick and mortar that sells a product, we have what's called the point of sale system that we integrate with called Pointme. And so you could uh, add all the different SKUs that you have, products that you're selling on your store with Pointy. And Pointy will pop up and register using QR codes and uh, SKU codes in your business profile. And we could talk a little bit about that if you do have a, a company that sells a specific service or product. Now, we also want to add photos. Very important to humanize your brand. We want to add photos. We want to add videos. 90% of the customers here love businesses that have photos. So we definitely, definitely want to increase your visibility. We want to show your human element by adding those photos, adding customers that love your product or service. Uh, so some helpful tips for great photos, use focus full lit images, we know this, I highlight the features of the brand, include logos and cover photos, and add a video if you can, just to humanize that experience. You can also create posts, it's very similar to social media, you could create different types of posts, updates, uh, discounts, you name it, here's some variations of those type of posts that you can create. Uh, for me, the, the best ones are these two, the offers and the events. Let's say you it's the holiday season, you wanna make sure you're selling a certain type of offer, uh, or there's an event that you're going to attend, you want people to be aware of that event, you can definitely list it there. I, I don't know if it's Michael asking this question. I think you're recording this session, so you'll have access to the deck through that recording. Great question. Um, as we're going through this, we also want to make sure we get reviews and respond to reviews. We set up the messaging functionality if you want to receive messages. And we use the Q&A section as a way of informing our prospective customers on their needs. So what do I mean by that? Let's get into it. First things first, if you have a positive review or if you're doing a stellar job and people love your product and or service, we always, always, always want to ask for reviews. We want to make sure we create a a operational process to ask for reviews from our customers. And this is a, an old study, but in 2016, the Harvard Business Review did a study on how much value 
each star has. And so what they realize is just by increasing your stars from three to four or four to five, you increase revenue between six to 10%, which is pretty, uh, it's, it's, it's a big bump just by increasing your revenue. So you definitely wanna make sure you have positive reviews. If you have a negative review, you wanna take that conversation offline as fast as possible. You wanna make sure you talk to them to better understand why they had a negative review or why they had a ne negative experience. This is always going to help you better serve that customer. Now, if you have a fake review, you can use the same function that I showed you guys a little bit earlier on the help drop down menu. Remember when we went to the dashboard, there was three little dots there and I said, this is where you ask for help and support. And you can submit a ticket saying, I was submitted a fake review and Google will review that fake review. How do we ask for reviews? Google gives you a hyperlink here. And so whenever we finish servicing a prospective a current customer, we can send them that hyperlink so that they can respond in kind and leave that positive review. It's extremely important. Uh, I was just, again, Northern Las Vegas yesterday and they were giving away $10 per review. So they said, hey, if you did a great job, we'll discount your ticket, $10 if you leave a review. So they know it drives traffic for their customer. So just think through how, I'm not telling you to do that, I'm telling you think through how you can promote your business to get as many positive reviews as possible. Now, for those folks that wants to connect to customers and receive real-time messages on the Google Business prof uh, Profile, there's something called messages on the Google Search and Google Maps. And you, you turn that on, you turn that feature on on your Google Business Profile, you submit your business number, Google will hide that business number and will give you uh, a variation of your business number. And so a prospective customer can send messages on the Google map and on the Google search, which is where your Google business profile is located. And you get pinged on that phone number of that message. This, are, this is great for restaurants. I primarily seen it for restaurants and for lounges uh, we receive a lot of requests are you still open are you going to open after two are you closing early what have you people don't want to show up to a restaurant it's going to be closed and so this is a great tool to keep your customers informed we talked about uh, the insights link on the business profile it gives you information of how your business profile is performing how many people are visiting your profile how many people clicked on your profile, how many people asked for directions on your profile. And this just gives you a better understanding of the value of your business profile. Again, showing your connectivity. I showed you again that little three little dots, which allows you to have a drop down menu here where you can reach out to Google, you can edit your profile, you create a new profile. For those of us who have multiple businesses or multiple restaurants, we can set up new business profiles for those different locations. Okay, with that, let's do a quick recap. First steps first, steps first we wanna claim or complete our business profile. And we walked through that, connect your Gmail account to that business profile. We wanna verify your profile, your business profile through phone, text, email, video, or postcard. And then once we, verify our profile we want to explore it update it and keep our customers engaged and informed by doing posts by adding videos by setting up the messaging functionality on our google business profile keep informing and delighting your customers adding new photos and information and exploring the performance part of your profile so you can have a better sense of who's visiting and what kind of information they're asking for now, be before we move on, there's, there's a section on the q and I always, always, always recommend that businesses that get the same question asked 5, 10, 15 times a week, a month, to do a Q&A section where you ask your customer, can you please ask me that question within my Google business profile so I could answer that question so that anyone that has that similar question can just go on the business profile and see that that question has been answered already. Okay. Let's dive into some Q&A and some resources. Uh, there's a lot of different cool resources that we provide for you as a business owner. Once you create your Google business profile, you can receive some swag from us at no cost by going to g.co backslash marketing kit. 
and you, I'll send you stickers and uh, postcards that you can put on your business or promote and use to highlight how amazing your business is. We also have some great content online on YouTube where you can learn at your own pace around a slew of different expert tips on how to grow your business or career. We have certifications as well. These certifications come at a cost through Coursera, but we highly recommend them if you do want to upskill yourself or your workforce. Absolutely love these courses. I've done the project management and the e-commerce digital marketing course, and it's well worth the investment. For someone that's gone to school for the past seven years, <laughs> uh, these courses are a better way of going about uh, being hyper-focused on the type of skill you want to learn. That's not it. There's a bunch of free resources uh, and information so you can better understand how to improve your business by going to google.co backslash google. And with that, I'd love to thank you all for joining me. Please crush that like button or leave me a review. What gets reviewed gets done. Uh, so we want to make sure you let us know, do you like this session? Did you enjoy the information? Can we tweak it somehow? Can we improve on it? Invite Robert back. Never invite Robert back. Whatever it is, we want to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us today. And let me see if there's any questions on the, the board. Are there questions? I, I don't quite see them. All right. Thank you, Guillermo. Uh, I appreciate your kind uh, words. There's a question. Um, uh, can non-techie people do these courses? Of course. Are you talking about the, the, they're actually, so this is a cool story. Our VP uh, saw the need to create these certifications because she said not everyone likes college or should go to college, but we want to make sure that our, our business owners and folks who are transitioning from one job to another have that ability to get upskilled. And so this is definitely coming from a perspective that you don't have to be a techie. You don't have to, you know, have that perspective to go through these courses. So they're fantastic courses. Great question. I appreciate that. And then, um, yeah, again, specifically digital marketing course. Um, and then there's a question, is Google offering a POS offering? How does Google's POS offering compare to other POSs such as Toast, Aloha, et cetera? Love that question. Google does not offer a POS system. They partner with a POS system called Pointy. And so unfortunately, we, we do not offer a POS. But if you want to, if you have products that you're selling and you want to connect those products to your Google business profile, you can use Pointy. Pointy. Let me show you where that is. That's this slide right here. So just go to pointy.withgoogle.com and you could set up that POS for your Google business profile. But we do not, we, we've partnered with this third party application, but we as a company do not have a POS system. Great question. Anyone else? All right, I'll turn it over to you, Christine. Yeah, great, thank you. Unless there are any other questions, uh, wanted to uh, certainly thank Roberto uh, for taking us through today's workshop. We hope that it was very beneficial to you and that you uh, took a lot of great notes and um, will be utilizing a lot of these tools. Um, we will be making this presentation available. It was also recorded. So for those who attended, uh, we will send it out to you. And again, this is a series of three workshops that we are uh, partnering with. Uh, uh, Google on. And so uh, you'll receive information um, on the upcoming workshops. Uh, so with that, um, have a great uh, rest of the week. And thank you again for joining us. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate you all. Bye. Quick question. Quick oh. question. Oh, one question. <laughs> Quick question. Does, does, so the next two classes, are they the same class or will we be kind of doing a progression of what we're starting on today and then expanding it? Yes. Short answer is yes. Thank you. Yes. More information to come. Okay. Great. Thank you all. Looks like we have Christine. one more question. Oh, we have one. Oh, let's Sorry. See. Um, um, I think, Guillermo, I think you might have raised your hand, but if you can put it in the chat, your question. Or in the Q&A? There's the question of how do we set up an appointment with Connie? Oh. 
Tanya, can you answer that? <laughs> I'm sorry, yes. Maybe place your contact information. <laughs> yes. In um, do you want me to put it on the chat or um, I can give you my direct line? It's 408 What is it? God, I don't even know my number. <laughs> it's 408 385 9800. And I will answer the phone and I can help you with your business. And it's also small business development at Access. I'll put it down on the chat if you'd like. That way you can have it. And I'll also be sharing the contact information and uh, a link to the recording with all attendees. Um, oh. if, you, if you do have any other questions, please feel free uh, to send me an email. If you received an email from Maria Rodriguez, um, that is me. Um, but any, any other questions from anyone? I think we are, I think we're good. Again, thank you all for joining us and I will see you at the next workshop. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.